Good evening. Good evening, church. Good evening. Forgive me for coming to you so late. But there's a lot of things I had to handle today that um, I had to move some construction material, let's just put it that way, out the way. So the workers could work in peace and harmony. And so that's what they're doing. Yes, Lord. My, my message today is coming from Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 to 7. But you know, before I do anything, I go to my book because we have these books. Like I said, we buy them from Walmart and different stores. And we never really read them. They sit up on the shelf. So I'm going to read this one, put that energy into my soul, and then I'll give it away to somebody so somebody else can be blessed with it. Amen. God cares. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. First Peter chapter 5 verse 7. Prayer enables us to carry all our worries to God in prayer. And if we doubt when we pray, we upset our hearts unnecessarily. How much needless care would we save ourselves if we just believed in prayer as the means of re relieving those cares and would learn the happy art of casting all our cares in prayer upon God who cares for us. This belief uh, that God is concerned about even the smallest affairs that affects our happiness and comfort, uh, and comfort limits the Holy One of Israel and makes our lives altogether devout of real happiness. Dear God, I cast all my anxieties on you today, for you care about the smallest affairs of my life. Thank you for loving me. Amen, amen, amen. As I mentioned before, I read my book, The Power of Prayer. You know, when I think of this right here, I think of that great soloist, that woman. I believe she's from the Carolinas now, Stephanie Mills. I've been playing her record, The Power of Love. You know, and that's a true statement, The Power of Love. I think about that every time I pick this book up. Unwrapping church heaven's gift. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 to 7. We all know, church, that the Bible tells us that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts chapter 20 verse 25. However, at this time of year, in the midst of all the giving and receiving, even the biggest Scrooge among us likes to receive a gift. For many, including myself, one of the best parts of receiving a gift is the anticipation and the excitement that accompanies the unwrapping of that gift. We are thinking, I wonder what it is. Is it what I want? I hope I won't look disappointed if it isn't. Everyone in this room knows exactly what I'm talking about. Come on, church. Well, regardless of whether you get a new life, a new tie, a new set of, of bunny uh, uh, slippers, or that new car you have been dreaming of, nothing you will receive this Christmas will come close to measuring up to the gift God gave the world on that first Christmas. Paul put it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 15. Thanks be unto God 
for his unspeakable gift. He said that the gift God gave the world was great beyond description. What was the gift that God gave to the world 2,000 years ago, church? It was our own uh, uh, darling son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave his son to this world so that sinners like you and me might save, might be saved from our sins and from the wages of those sins. Death in hell forever. Church, in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, in this passage, Paul writes about the great unmistakable gift of God. He helps us to understand Jesus, his mission, and his ministry a little bit more clearly in effect. He helps us to unwrap heaven's gift. I would like for us to take some time today to look into this passage. I want us to see what the Lord gave us when he gives us his son. I want us to be excited about his gift and I want us to fully appreciate who Jesus is and what he has done for you and me. I want to preach church for a few minutes on this thought. Unwrapping heaven's gift. Amen. Hallelujah. The mission of heaven's gift, the origin of his mission. His mission was conceived in heaven and carried out on this earth. Contrary to popular belief, Jesus Christ did not have his beginning in Bethlehem. He was born there as an infant. But he has been around for all eternity. In fact, he is the great I am. He is the agent behind creation. His mission was planned before the world was created, church. But it was carried out on this earth some 2,000 years ago. This wasn't, a, a, wasn't man's plan on religious or religious plan, no. It was, church, it was a plan born in the heart of God, born in his love for you. Fullness of time, the fullness of time. The time was right re religiously. The Jews, church, were free from idolatry. They were looking for Messiah. They had finished their Old Testament and they had created a system of synagogues and religious schools. All of this made the propagation of the message of the Messiah much easier. The time was right, culturally. The common language of the day was Greek, a very expressive, expressive language known around the world. The time was right politically. The Roman Empire was the dominant power in that day. They provi provided three uh, 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 tremendous assets to the spread of the gospel message. The Roman peace provided social, economic, and political stability, church. This allowed the early uh, uh, missionaries and preachers to travel freely throughout the Roman Empire. The Roman law gave the citizens living in the Empire Church many rights that also help spread the gospel. The Roman roads, these highways, many of which are still in use today, serve to aid in the spreading of the gospel message. The objective, church, of his message, of his mission, verse 5 tells us that he came to redeem them that were under the law. The word redeem means to buy in the slave market through 
the payment of the redemption price. To buy for oneself and to forever remove from the cell. Jesus Christ came to this world for one purpose. To die for the sins of humanity. Church, this was his clear statement and the sole passion of his life. Even the prophet Isaiah said, saw that this world, that this would be the ministry of the Messiah. He did not come to this world as a great teacher or leader of men. He did not come as an example for us to follow. He came to give his life a ransom for many. Praise his name. The outcome of his mission. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, then you might not know this, but his ministry was a resounding success. When he went to the cross for the loss, he paid a price that no one else could have ever paid. He was able to declare from the cross, it is finished according to Hebrews. The work Jesus did on the cross was significant for all men for all time. Note this church, his sacrifice on the cross was and is significant to save you and keep you saved forever. Have you experienced the power of his redemptive work in your own heart and life, church? The ministry of the heaven's gift it was a personal ministry, church. Notice the use of the word we. Yea, our youth, our, yours, thou, though. Verse 5 to 7. This lets us in on the truth that the ministry of heaven's gift was very personal in nature. He did what he did for people he knew. He did what he did for people he loved. He did what he did as a personal ministry. I know that his death on the cross was significant to save anyone who will trust him by faith. However, when he went to the cross, he knew that uh, uh, would, uh, that he would uh, come to faith in Jesus. He knew, church, what I would be before and after that eventful day. And when he went to the cross, church, he died with me on his mind. His death was very personal in nature, church. His interreaction inter with the dying thief. Luke, Paul get hung up on limit atonement and university atonement. We have to get past that debate and come to the place where he know that he died for us as individuals. I know that he died for me. Church, it was a particular ministry. Jesus did what no other person could have ever done. Any of the billions of people who have ever lived could have been nailed to that cross and not a single sin would have been paid for, not even their own. However, when Jesus went to that cross and died, he was able to pay for the sin debt on the whole world. Why, church? Because he was different than any man that had ever lived before or had ever lived since. He was sinless and he was God in the flesh. What, church, what he did can and never will be uh, duplicated. The French mathematician uh, 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 August was talking about religion one day when the 
uh, Scottish uh, essay, uh, Thomas Kalin, comments suggesting that a start, they start a new religion to replace Christianity based on positive thinking and mathematical principles. Kalin thought about it a moment and replied, very good, Mr. Common, very good. All you will need to do will be, uh, will be to speak as never a man spoke and live as a man lived and be crucified and raise again on the third day and get the world to believe that you are still alive, then your religion huh, will have a chance to get on. It was a powerful ministry, church. According to verse 5, the ministry of heaven, of heaven's gift, accomplished two great things, church, for you and me. It delivered us from the authority of law we could never keep. James chapter 2 verse 10. It rekindled us uh, to a place and uh, to place us in the family of God. Uh, this is something religion and human efforts could never achieve. This powerful ministry of Christ is available only by grace through faith church. The message of the heaven's gift, the message about our father, the phrase Abba, father, could roughly be translated daddy, father. It is a phrase that expressed the intimacy God's children can enjoy with him. This speaks of a relationship that allows us to enter the presence of God at any time to worship to seek his help. The Lord has literally become our Father. We can be intimate with them as we desire to be. This was a new idea, particularly to the Jews. They had many names for God. He was Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Ra, Jehovah Son, Jehovah Ra, etc. When they prayed to God, church, they used whatever name they felt was appropriate uh, for their current cir circumstances. When the disciples came to Jesus to ask him about praying to God and how to approach him, Jesus told them to pray. Our Father, we don't have to memorize lots of names for God. We just need a to remember that regardless of what he, we face in life, he is our father and as our father, he longs to be a blessing to his children. Notice, notice this church. We are no longer servants to sin and death, but by grace and through the blood of Jesus, we are the sons of God. The prodigal son wanted to return home a servant. But his father had only ideas for him. It is amazingly, amazingly true, raising, but true. God saved us to be his sons. A message about our family church. Notice what verse 6 says. It tells us that we are in this thing together. Notice ye are sons and into your heart crying Abba Father. The idea is, the idea here is this. God has done a work of grace in us that has made us one family in him. We are a people saved by the same blood headed to the same heaven and indwelled by the same spirit. In other words, there is a common thread that runs through our lives. This makes us in him no big eyes and no little U's. Just as, just us, the redeemed children of God in love with Jesus because of what he has done for us. Serving together 
and loving one another as we had toward glory. And our hearts reminds us that there is something powerful about our common love for him. That love in our hearts never get tired of hearing about him. That love never tires of worshiping him. That love binds us together in a way more profound than the bonds of flesh and blood. Because he lives in you and he lives in me, we are capable of fellowship that transcends time, space, and difficulty. There is truly something very special about the family of the Lord. Something so special, church, that words cannot declare it nor human minds comprehend it. Something, church, that brings opposite together in him. Amen? A message about our future. We are reminded here that we are his heirs. What belonged to our father belonged to us as well. This is what Paul told us in Romans chapter 8 verse 17. We are heirs of the greatest estate that has ever existed. Now when we think of being an heir of our spiritual minds, always think of money first. We think of all of, we think of all our father's possessions and how we will uh, move heaven and earth if necessary to meet the need of his children, of his child. I am glad that this is true. But church, what we have in him is far deeper than just the financial and material. Think about it, church. We serve a God who is eternal and immortal. We will inherit that. We serve a God who is in indefinitely holy. We will inherit that also someday. What God has for us is far beyond our comprehension today. If you are in love with this world and what it can give you financially speaking, then what I have just said may not mean much to you. No, not at all. However, church, if you are sick and tired of sin, headache, and pain, then you are looking to forward to, to that day when the saints will have their tears dried away by the Father in that city. We are destined to inherit someday. Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 church. In my conclusion as I think about unwrapping heaven's gift I get excited to think about all Jesus is and all he has done for us. I just want to bless his name for thinking about a worthless old womb like me. Old worm like me. Hallelujah. But I wonder about you, church. Are you saved? You know, before a gift can become what it was designed to be, it must first be given. Then it must be received. God has given his gift to the world. We have, tr we have tried to unwrap him just a bit this morning. God has given the gift. Have you received his gift for yourself? If not, there would be no better time to do that than just than right now. Some of us have received the gift, church, but we don't really seem very thankful for it. Don't you hate giving someone something and they respond with ingratitude? Yes, I heard. Yes, Lord. I wonder how God must feel when he sees how we treat his gracious, precious, precious, 
priceless and perfect gift. Maybe you need to come and thank him for his unspeakable gift, church. Maybe you need to come before him and get back to the place in your life where you live like his gift meant something to you. Only you and the Lord know your heart today. You do what he is telling you right now. That was the word of God, church. And before I bless you out, um, I want to read from my book, uh, The Power of Prayer. An absent heart. These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far from me. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13. Devotion engages the heart in prayer. It is not an easy task for the lips to try to pray while the heart is absent from it. The very essence of prayer is the spirit of devotion. Without devotion, prayer is empty, a vain around of words. Said to the, sad to say, church, much, much of this kind of prayer prevails in the church today. This is a busy age. Business and active and active. And they are bursting spirits have invaded the church of God. Its religious performance are many. True worship finds conjugal in the heart and spirit of devotion church. Lord, I want to engage all of me when I come to you in prayer. Please give me a heart and spirit of devotion so that I can truly worship you. Amen. Church, if this message tonight has been a blessing to you, find yourself a Bible-based church and become a part of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, the four amens I say, north, east, south, and west. Amen. 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 We're coming. God bless. Good night.